Now you might not know that back in 2019, a researcher actually found a serious iCloud keychain exploit that could gain access to all passwords within that keychain. <laughs> no wonder a lot of people have to consider third-party cybersecurity tools now. So having said that, I'm not going to just talk about any old tool here. Specifically, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about 1Password. Oh yeah, it's time to break it down for this iCloud Keychain versus 1Password review. Hey, hey, I'm Mike from Cyber News. Welcome, or in your case, welcome back. Now, I've tested a lot of providers, including password manager comparison videos on the channel, but I've never really covered the iCloud Keychain in its own thorough review. So, let's go ahead and fix that. I feel like starting from a security standpoint is probably the important way to go, especially because people tend to have big questions like, can the keychain be hacked? Or even, can a password manager be hacked? And well, it really all comes down to encryption. 1Password and the iCloud password manager both use AES 256-bit encryption, an industry standard among many of the best password manager titans out there. Now both are zero knowledge, and they have 2FA options, and they both have bug bounty programs, which means that their software is checked for vulnerabilities quite often. Now in terms of privacy and actual password storage, there isn't much difference here, both being zero knowledge and both being cloud-based. But 1Password even has a local storage option, you know, for those of you who might want a little more privacy. So in terms of security practices in general, they both use end-to-end -end encryption, which is really important, but the capabilities themselves are widely different. Now I'm gonna jump into that in just a minute, but if you're considering 1Password right now, I'll just go ahead and leave the most exclusive deals right down in that description for you to check out. All right, looking at the basic functionalities for this Keychain versus 1Password video, it's clear that both do autofill pretty well, letting me log into any online account quickly and easily. They both generate new and strong passwords and then save them for you. And it isn't just passwords that you can store either. Oh no, certificates, secure notes, and other relevant info can be autofilled and filed at your convenience. When it comes to setting either up, no major red flags here either. With 1Password, you just download the app or browser extension, and with the iCloud Keychain, there are a few steps you gotta go through within your Apple's device's settings. And once you're ready to go with 1Password, you'll be met with a much more streamlined UI user interface. On the left, you'll see your categories, and navigating through these is super easy. With the iCloud Keychain, it's clearly a different approach here. All passwords are meshed together. Now, I did like that the list was alphabetical on my iPhone, but still, no categorization for social media accounts to banking and other stuff like that. You know, for beginners or even more experienced password manager users, this might get real old real quick. But what's really sticking out to me is that customizing the permissions isn't the same. When you have a third-party password manager, you can usually share passwords with select people. Or like 1Password, you can actually customize each password vault giving access to whoever is relevant for whichever vault. So just look here, I have a vault with all my streaming platforms and this is totally safe to share with my wife. So just head here and share this particular vault. Yet my own personal work folder or any other vault in my account won't be viewable to her unless I specifically share it with her. With the iCloud keychain, I have the option to airdrop individual passwords to other Apple users. But if I wanted to share multiple credentials, well, this doesn't exactly make for a streamlined approach, now does it? Cut, copy, paste, cut, copy, paste, cut, copy, paste, cut, copy, paste. And with the Apple Password Manager, if someone happened to borrow your device, well, they could easily log into your social media account or whatever you have stored, especially if you haven't set up any 2FA or biometric authentication. Get on it if you haven't. With 1Password, this would only be the case if, one, they had access to your Password Manager account in the first place, or two, you've shared permissions with them automatically. Now I should mention they've updated the process so you can share passwords even with non-1Password users. So that's really cool. The bottom line here is 1Password's implementation of individual vaults is one of the most streamlined I've come across. Saves me eight on a time. Another area that stands out to me is the value 1Password offers. Take their watchtower feature for example. This will update me on the whole ecosystem of my passwords at just a glance and give me the individual status of individual websites. 
While the iCloud keychain does have a security recommendation section, it can be tedious to navigate through that list to say the least. Then there's the dark web monitoring and more uniquely travel mode. This one is truly rare in the password manager game. It's letting me customize what vaults and passwords are safe to access while inside different borders around the world. Now I mentioned in my previous 1Password review that I tend to use this when I'm traveling and need to access personal passwords while leaving my work passwords safely locked away. iCloud Keychain does the basics, sure, but you won't find the aforementioned features from this free option. There's also no app, and passwords are just added as you browse from your Apple device. I love that it syncs across your Apple devices, but that isn't exactly uncommon for a reliable password manager either. I mean, they tend to be accessible on whatever device you have the password manager app on, right? And I should really mention that 1Password has a pretty powerful browser extension available on all major browsers. When using this, I can access pretty much any of the features I need. So the biggest takeaway from my iCloud versus 1Password analysis is that the scope is much wider from 1Password, but it isn't free. Kind of what you'd expect, right? But with 1Password, there is a 14 day free trial that you can test out and see if you like it. Just know that it isn't a forever free like the iCloud keychain is. But for advanced features, really great navigation, more OS freedom and rock solid security, well, their entry level plan is currently under $3 a month. It's nothing. This even includes 24 seven email support. So it's really useful for new or even veteran password managers alike. And a quick little side note here, I don't just do one password reviews. Oh no, I also release extensive password manager review videos. So please slam that subscribe button to never miss a beat. Also, why not drop a like while you're there? It actually does make a difference and helps us push forward new research and more reviews. And now the final verdict of iCloud Keychain versus 1Password. If you're someone who likes the bells and whistles and streamlined navigation, then truly go ahead and consider 1Password. Now that's not to say the Apple password manager is terrible. It just isn't comparable to a third party dedicated password manager that does so much more. But hey, what do you think? Are you using a password manager right now at all? If you are, what's your biggest gripe? And if you're not, why not? All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.